beginning at an altitude of 1,000 miles and extending an additional 25,000 miles, lay lethal bands of radiation called the Van Allen radiation belts. Every space mission in history with humans on board, from both the United States and Soviet Union, from the first in 1961 to the present, has been well below this deadly radiation field. Mercury, Gemini, Soyuz, Skylab, the space shuttle, all maintained altitudes well below 1,000 miles. All except Apollo. In 1998, the space shuttle flew to an altitude of 350 miles, one of its highest altitudes ever, hundreds of miles below the beginning of a field of radiation that was so severe that the astronauts inside of their shielded spacecraft and inside of their shielded spacesuits saw flashes of light with their eyes shut that they described as shooting stars due to radiation penetrating first the shuttle's shielding, then their spacesuit shielding, then their skulls, and finally the retinas of their closed eyes. As a result, CNN issued the following report noting NASA's unpredicted surprise. The radiation belt surrounding Earth may be more dangerous for spacewalking astronauts than previously believed. Scientists say the phenomena known as the Van Allen belts can spawn killer electrons when the Earth's magnetic field changes. These electrons that are being studied could have an important effect not only on satellites, which has happened in the past, but could also affect the astronauts by creating large doses of radiation that could influence their health. The electrons can penetrate through various materials, including spacesuits, and can pass through, in fact, the walls of the space station and can create high charges deep inside of these objects. The Van Allen radiation belts, two giant swaths of radiation around Earth, were the first discovery of the space age in 1958. In August 2012, NASA launched the Van Allen probes to provide the most detailed picture of the belts ever seen. Within days of launch, the probes revealed a third never-before-seen ring of radiation that persisted for about a month. Scientists already knew the belts shrink and swell in response to incoming energy from the sun, but they don't know exactly how. The discovery of a new belt offers additional clues to map out the mysteries of the region and shows us that the first discovery of the space age can still surprise us. During the course of geomagnetic activity, disturbances caused by flares on the sun, by big blobs of plasma coming out from the sun towards the Earth, the Earth's magnetic field is battered and shaken. Some of that energy is captured in the Earth's magnetic field, and through a variety of processes, that energy energizes particles in the Earth's radiation belts up to energies that are hazardous to spacecraft and astronauts. The Radiation Belt Storm Probes mission is NASA's mission to study the Earth's Van Allen radiation belts, two invisible regions of highly charged particles in space that surround the Earth. Each of the two RBSP spacecraft carries five instrument suites and a total of eight instruments. The two spacecraft are identical. The region of space that we're talking about, where the Radiation Belt Storm Probe spacecraft will go, is one that's occupied by communication spacecraft, by weather spacecraft, by all sorts of spacecraft that you use on a daily basis. 
There are two Van Allen radiation belts. The one closer to Earth, about a thousand miles up above the Earth's equator, contains highly charged protons that are trapped there for years and years. The further out radiation belt, the outer radiation belt, at about a twelfth of the distance to the moon, contains a mixture of energetic electrons and energetic ions. Both of them are hazardous, but hazardous in different ways and at different times. They're always changing, waxing and waning, increasing and decreasing in strength. We don't understand why. The goals of the Radiation Belt Storm Probe's mission are to determine where the charged particles in the Earth's radiation belts come from, how they get energized, and how they're lost into space. The first use for the data from the mission will be by scientists who attempt to understand the physical processes that are occurring in the radiation belts. They'll use those data to develop models for space weather in the Earth's environment, the hazardous features that surround us. However, the data can also be used by engineers to better design spacecraft. For example, if you know how much radiation is out there, you know how thick to shield your spacecraft with walls of metal. The Earth's radiation belts pose a hazard to astronauts, a hazard because radiation, prolonged exposure to radiation can cause cancer. What we want to do is understand just how much radiation is out there and just where it is, and we can warn astronauts when to be inside and outside their spacecraft. The RBSP spacecraft are focused on the dynamic radiation belts in the Earth's inner magnetosphere. They're the only spacecraft that focus on those. Consequently, they are a critical component in the series of phenomena that link the sun to the earth.